UFC 269 Charles Oliveira versus Dustin Poirier. Welcome to the main card prediction video by yours truly here at Boxing MMA Picks. He goes by the name of Zahn, I go by the name of Harris, and as usual, we are back with another UFC prediction and analysis video, giving you the fight-by-fight -fight breakdown, fight-by-fight -fight analysis, specifically from the betting perspective, here to let you know which fights are worth the value, which fights you want to avoid, which underdog has the best shot at winning, and sticking around to the end of the video, you get some parlay action as well. If you have not taken a look at our prelim video yet, please make sure you go ahead and do that. While you're at it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up on this video, and most importantly, participate in the comments. We want to hear from you. For this pay-per-view event, Charles Oliveira versus Dustin Poirier, Amanda Nunes versus Juliana Pena, we have two title fights on here. 15 fights overall for the card. We covered the first 10 in our prelim video. So of course we are going to get to the remaining five fights that make up the main card. And we're going to start with fight number one, Rulian Paeva taking on Sugar Sean O'Malley. Of course, we know that uh, Sugar Sean had a lot of talking to do for this fight in terms of being on the main card, as opposed to Dom Cruz and Pedro Munoz being on the prelim card. But Moving on to the prediction here, Sean O'Malley, he beat Chris Moutinho back in July. He's on a two-fight win streak. We know he's very good on the feet at this point. Have to respect his power. I think nine of his 14 wins are by TKO, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Southpaw stance, he'll switch stance. He, you know, a lot of technique, pretty light on the feet, good distance control. Fights from the outside, throws a lot of fakes and feints. Good timing, good counter puncher as well. Um, dangerous with both the hands and the feet. Calf kicks, spinning kicks, front kicks, things like that. Uh, again, a very high-level striker in Sean O'Malley. Uh, Rulian Paeva, he beat Kyler Phillips uh, via majority decision. That was back in July. He's on a three-fight win streak um, you know, in, in his own right. Uh, that's important. And uh, that's an important win when you think about taking on another dynamic striker. Kyler Phillips, of course, very dynamic. Sean O'Malley, very dynamic as well. William Paeva, you know, good Thai kickboxing type of style, good kicks, diverse kicks as well. Hands are decent, combinations are solid, good movement, pretty light on the feet in his own right. Um, but for this one, you know, I feel very, for, for this fight, I feel very similarly for this fight, the way that I felt last week when looking at Manel Kopp versus Jean Gazumagulov. What I, what I was thinking in that fight, you know, Zumagulov, very game opponent, very solid opponent, very solid overall fighter. I think Paeva, very game opponent, tough matchup for anyone. We, we, we picked Kyler Phillips last time and Paeva beat him. But I feel like this is also a fight where, you know, it's really well designed for Sean O'Malley to have a showcase here. Uh, you know, like last week, very well designed fight for Manel Cup to have a showcase to show us a level that we didn't see yet. And he did that in, in speaking about Manel Cup, I think we're looking for the same thing from Sean O'Malley in this fight, a match that's sort of made for him to perform at a higher level, to potentially get a ranking under his name finally. Uh, and again, to show us a level that we haven't quite seen yet from him. Um, so I'm going Sean O'Malley on this one. I think he's gonna look really good. I think he's gonna have a showcase to open up the main card and uh, yeah, he's going to be my pick. Yeah, I'm going to go real fast here, man. Uh, I like Sean O'Malley in this spot here. He's going to be the more creative striker. Uh, the reach, he has the reach as well. Um, so I see, I, see a, I see a good show here for Sean here. He, he's kind of picking and choosing his opponents. Uh, they're, telling, he's, they're, they're showing him uh, top 10 guys and saying, for the amount of money he's getting paid, why am I going to fight those guys? So he took this fight. I think he's going to win here. The more dynamic striker, I think this is, he's going to stay on the feet. And I don't think O'Malley's going to make the same mistake uh, that Phillips, Kyler, Kyler Phillips made in terms of um, having that cardio dump. He was gassed. I don't think O'Malley's going to waste energy in this fight. I think he's either going to connect, get a knockout, or win a decision. Let's move on to fight number two. We have Kai Kara France taking on Cody Garbrandt. Uh, this one is in the flyweight division, so we are going to see Cody Garbrandt come down in weight. Of course, that will be relevant in this fight. 
Kaikara France, he beat Rogerio Bonterin back in March. Um, decent movement, although I don't like that he's flat-footed. Um, you know, active movement on the feet, a lot of in and out, a lot of fakes, a lot of level changes. Decent striker overall, although he is fairly basic. Um, you know, he swings big at times, he misses big at times, of course, as well. Doesn't really have the best takedown defense, but he definitely has a lot of heart and a lot of survival ability. Cody Garbrandt, he lost to Rob Font back in May. He's one in four in his last fight, although very stiff competition. Um, you know, definitely this fight is a step down in competition for him comparatively to who he's fought in his last five. Um, we know his MO at this point. You're looking at a fighter who I would still consider one of the better boxers in the UFC. Uh, we know he likes to engage almost to a fault. Um, you know, he'll go hit for hit with his, hit with his opponents. Doesn't really have the best striking IQ. Um, that Rob Font fight, he actually showed us some wrestling ability in that fight. You know, you do have to give him credit for that. I wouldn't say it's a strong suit of his. Um, the problem, of course, is that his cardio isn't the best. So I don't think that wrestling is necessarily going to be a t something that he targets. Uh, and of course, when he gets tired, that's when, the, uh, that's when the IQ goes out the window. And that's when he wants to go shot for shot with his opponent and sort of see who has the better chin. And usually he does not end up on, uh, on, on top in that situation. Uh, now, physically, again, Garbrand is coming down in weight. He should be much stronger in this fight. He's coming down from 135. He's competing at 125 for this fight. I also think him coming down in weight, it might ignite a bit of a new flame with him. You know, he's, a, he's still only 30 years old. Um, you know, still only 12 and four in terms of how many professional fights he's had. So, you know, he should still have a lot of life left in him, especially if he can put a win or two together in this flyweight division. Um, you know, you have to think that at least he thinks he can make a run in this division, and that's why he chose to come down and wait. Um, so I, I like Cody Garbrandt here. I think um, his striking should be more pure, more effective. I think he should be physically stronger. And I think, uh, I mean, you can't ignore the four inches in height, despite the reach disadvantage. Uh, I think he's just going to be the hungrier of the two fighters here. I think he's not going to make the same mistakes that he's made in his, uh, you know, four losses over his last five fights. And I think he's going up against an opponent who doesn't present the same challenges that some of his previous opponents did. Um, so Cody Garbrandt is going to be my pick in this one, minus 140. I think the odds are actually pretty decent for a one-off bet here. Uh, again, so yeah, yeah, this is this is a hard fight for me to decide. It's Cody Garbrandt, he's coming down in weight. I don't like that he's coming down to the 125-pound division. I think that's going to deplete him a lot. Um, he was never a, a, a big 135-pounder. Um, but I just think at the 125 pound weight, I think those guys move a lot faster. Uh, there, there's some, there's some, a, there's a lot of speed at that division. And uh, Cody is a fast fighter. He, he does have fast hands. Uh, but I have a feeling that he's going to be the slower fighter come Saturday. And his chin issues, um, I can't ignore that. And Car France has power. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the underdog here. Um, it's a gut check here, gut pick here. Um, I'm not going to put a play on this, but I think uh, I think Car France has a good chance here with this fight. So I'm going to go Car France to connect and uh, hurt and uh, give Cody a, a bad welcome here. Fight number three, we have Jeff Neal taking on Santiago Ponzinibbio. Jeff Neal, 13 and four. He's a plus 100 underdog. Santiago Ponzinibbio, 29 and four. He's the minus 120 favorite. Jeff Neal's on a two fight lo losing streak. He lost to Neil Magny back in May. Uh, he's very confident in his ability on the feet. Um, you know, decent movement around the ring. Mixes it up well between his punches and his kicks. Has the speed in his punches. You know, throws a lot of fakes and feints. Keeps his opponents guessing. Um, also does have some wrestling. Uh, that gives him a good balance. Um, you know, that, that and, and makes him have decent or respectable takedown defense not completely a one-dimensional fighter in terms of his ability to include some wrestling, although I don't expect him to do that in his fights. He does pretty much keep it on the feet. And although he does have power, it's not really a one-shot touch of death type of thing. Um, you know, his power more so comes from his accuracy and his speed um, and, and the accumulation of his punches and sort of catching you 
within a combination. Um, so definitely a pretty pure striker in Jeff Neal. And I do expect him to keep it on the feet. Same thing with Santiago Ponzinibbio. I do expect him to keep the fight on the feet as well. A uh, bit of a different style than Jeff Neal, though. He beat Miguel Baeza back uh, in June for a unanimous decision. He does have good movement. He cuts the ring off pretty well. Doesn't really chase his opponents. Uh, and he is coming forward at all times. Good control of distance. You know, he'll use, um, you know, fakes and feints. he use good head movement. Fight at a high pace. Uh, pretty good fight IQ. He does mix up the strikes well. Finds the openings. Although he doesn't have the cleanest boxing uh, he does have a pretty long, reachy jab, a solid calf kick as well. And he has some pace and pop behind his punches, you know, even late into fights. You think about him knocking out Neil Magny halfway through round four. Of course, Neil Magny is a, is a common opponent between the two of them. Jeff Neil lost to Neil Magny. Ponzinibbio knocked Neil Magny out. Um, so, again, that could be telling, but MMA math doesn't always work out, as you always say. Um, again, that this is this is an interesting fight because we know Neil is the cleaner striker. Neil, arguably, is the better striker, the more pure striker, um, the better technique in his striking. Um, you know, he could even clip Ponzinibbio at times in this fight. But you know, Jeff Neil, he's shown recently, and I don't know if it's just uh, uh, something that's going to come and go for him. Or I don't know if it's a sign of things to come, but he's shown recently that he doesn't really have that dog in him, so to speak. Um, you know, I expect Ponzinibbio to be the, the much tougher of the two fighters. Um, he's going to bring the fight to Jeff Neal. I don't think Jeff Neal will be able to, to necessarily handle it outside of Neal, of course, clipping him with a, with a clean combination, which could definitely happen in this fight. But you take that aspect away. And I expect Ponzinibbio to be putting the pressure on, to be making it a slightly uglier fight. Um, he has that toughness. He has that dog in him, whereas I don't think Jeff Neal has it in him. Um, so if I'm basing it off of the last two fights, albeit the high level of competition, I haven't been too impressed with Jeff Neal. Whereas if I look at Ponzinibbio's last fight, again, Miguel Baeza is not Jeff Neal. But Miguel Baeza is that sort of more technical, crisper striker that Jeff Neal is. And Santiago Ponzinibbio was able to weather the early storm and change the pace of the fight sort of in the second half going forward. Um, so I'm going with Santiago Ponzinibbio, tougher fighter, has that dog in him. And I think middle of round two, in addition to round three, I think those rounds are his. And it's a matter of him avoiding the danger in round one. So Santiago Ponzinibbio is going to be my pick. Yeah, this this is going to be a, a striker fight. This is they're definitely going to be uh, striking in this match here. I don't think it goes to the mat unless Ponzinibbio decides to uh, bring this fight to the mat. Uh, when I look at Jeff Neal's last two fights, though, I see something different here. I see Neil Magny. Um, that was a uh, Neil Magny utilized the grappling right. So, and then the Stephen Thompson fight was able to do what Steve Thompson does in a striking match. Um, when I look at Ponzinibbio's last two fights, I look at Miguel Baeza, a fight that he was, he, he was in real big trouble early on. Then, you, like you said, his heart showed, and he was able to finish the fight strong and, and win the match. And then prior to that, he got knocked out in his return fight against uh, Jing Liang Li. I'll be quick. I like Jeff Neal in this spot. Uh, I just feel that this is a this is a fight that he wants. He's not fighting a striker that has a lot of movement to to move away. I think he's gonna be the better striker. I think he can eventually connect. Uh, I seen the Santiago fight versus uh, Miguel Baeza. Baeza had chances to put him out. I think you put Jeff Neal in a similar uh, situation. I think he puts him out. So I'm gonna go Jeff Neal here, having the better stand up, and I just think this is a a fight that favors his style. And I think he's going to be able to look good here. So I'm going to go Jeff Neal to get it done. Very fair pick there. Let's move on to fight number four. And the co-main event of the evening, we have Amanda Nunes versus Juliana Pena. Of course, Amanda Nunes is one of those fighters whose fight predictions don't take too long. We know everything that she does at this point. Um, you know, patient, not really a brawler in any way, shape, or form. 
but very dangerous on the feet. Um, you know, scary power, fast hands, very explosive, has the ability to land takedowns. I mean, two and a half takedowns per fight. She can grapple. She has good ground and pound as well. 84% takedown defense, which would definitely be very relevant in this fight. And you have to acknowledge how physically strong she is, especially when considering the 135 pound belt that she has, as opposed to the 145 pound belt that she has, where she is still physically strong. Um, Juliana Pena, she beat Sarah McMahon uh, in January. That was your rear naked choke, a lot of face and feints in her stand up. She's going to use that to try to find timing, decent uh, distance control on the feet as well. Her stand up is fairly basic, though. Um, she likes the clinch. She has a pretty strong clinch. She, she is able to, or she has been able to control physically bigger fighters. I'm referring to the Jermaine Durandamy fight in terms of her clinch control. Good knees in the clinch, um, very willing to engage in the stand up. And her strength is in her grappling, you know, decent takedowns um, as well. Two and a half takedowns in her own right. Very similar percentage in terms of takedown accuracy. Um, you know, look for Pena's aggression to work against her here. We know that Nunes has great takedown defense. We know that Nunes can land takedowns of her own. Nunes, to me, also has significantly better and, and significantly more dangerous stand-up. Simply put, uh, I expect Nunes to win here. I think more than likely it's going to be a round one finish. Sarah McMahon was able to touch Juliana Pena on the feet a couple times. Let Amanda, let Amanda Nunes hit you in those situations, and that fight's probably over. Um, Pena, to me, is also not the most physically present 135-er. Um, so I'm looking for Amanda Nunes to kind of steamroller here. Um, yeah, she's going to be my pick. Obviously, she's minus 800. I might even consider her betting betting a Nunes as the finish. Um, not sure if it's going to be knockout. More than likely, it will be. But you never know. Could be ground and pound leading to a choke. Um, could be anything here. But I'm going with Amanda Nunes. I think she's going to get the finish. She's going to retain her title. I don't really see her being uh, in a threatening position in this fight. Yeah, yeah, I'll be quick, man. Amanda Nunes is my pick uh, to get this done. The only uh, concern is Amanda Nunes hasn't fought in this division 135 um, in some time. I know her last two fights were in the 145 versus Megan Anderson and uh, Felicia Spencer. So now she's going to be going all the way down to 135, but she's a queen in this division. So I don't think it's going to be a big, big factor here. Um, I think the wrestling cancels out, and I think Amanda is uh, 10 times a better striker. I think she's going to put her away. So I'm going to go Amanda Nunes uh, to defend her title. All right, so let's move on then to our main event of the evening. Of course, uh, definitely the most difficult fight to call on this card. We have lightweight title on the line here, Charles Oliveira taking on Dustin Poirier. Uh, for this fight, Charles Oliveira, I mean, we know very sharp striker at this point, I have to say, uh, more than just an improved striker. I think he's a pretty sharp striker at this point. Sharp straight punches, good speed, good accuracy in the strikes as well. Um, the punches have some sting on them, you know, good striking IQ as well. And he does mix it up pretty well in terms of the punches and the kicks. Um, and again, just a, a complete fighter at this point. We know he can strike. We know we can take you down two and a half takedowns per fight, almost 50% accuracy. Uh, and we know he's a, a very, very, very high level grappler. We see his submission attempts at almost three per fight. Um, really good in top position on the ground. If he, if he is on top of you, um, you're definitely in a very compromised position. Um, so that's something that Dustin Poirier is going to want to avoid. Uh, if I'm looking at Dustin Poirier, Southpaw, definitely one of the best strikers in the UFC, uh, particularly with his boxing. Good striking defense, good head movement, good blocking, high IQ, good movement, good counter puncher, um, good combinations, has that steady pace on the feet, great chin as well, uh, good cardio as well. Um, he can threaten the takedown, although I wouldn't really call him a great wrestler per se, and I don't think he will try to do that in this fight. Um, he likes the guillotine, although it sometimes it costs him. Um, that's something that could especially be true in this fight and I think his IQ should be high enough to not really attempt that in this fight 
I think what makes this fight really interesting is that Oliveira may check more boxes uh, technically here. I think he may check more boxes in terms of advantages. I think he's obviously better on the ground, um, at, at least with the grappling, if not both the wrestling and the grappling. Um, you know, more of a threat. I think he may have a moment or two in this fight where Dustin ends up on the ground with him. And, and in those moments, the fight could be over. Um, you know, on the feet, we know that Oliveira is significantly improved. We can legitimately say he's good on the feet at this point. That said, I think Poirier is still the superior striker. Um, you know, ultimately, I think majority of this fight will stay on the feet. I think that's where Poirier shines, albeit sometimes he's in very close fights. Um, you know, he ends up pulling through and he ends up getting the W. You know, it, it's a high stakes fight. I think both of these guys will perform, um, but, you know, partially a gut pick here. Also partially just thinking about this fight, staying on the feet. I got to go with the person who I think is the better striker. Um, and I think that's Dustin Poirier. High stakes, both of these guys are going to bring it. Poirier has been, uh, you know, the, the title has been in his sights for quite a while. You can say the same thing for Oliveira, but he achieved that. I think it's Poirier's time to achieve that now. Uh, and I think he's going to walk out with the W. So I'm going with Dustin Poirier, five round decision, four rounds to one, three rounds to two. Uh, it's going to be one of those type of fights, but I'm going with Dustin Poirier. Yeah, I agree with you in a sense that uh, Charles Oliveira might be the, the better fighter on paper. He might be the better guy. Um, based on as far as being the more well-rounded guy, having that deadly ground game. And we can't forget Dustin Poirier. I know it's Khabib Nurmago made off, but you got him on the mat and he quickly submitted him. And you got to think that Charles Oliveira has that high-level jujitsu to pull off the same type of submission against Dustin. So this is a fight that can literally go either way. For me, though, the big difference here in this fight is I think Oliviera needs to get this done in the first two rounds. Uh, I think as the fight goes on, Dustin has shown that uh, he gets better as the fight goes on. And he's going to, I think he's going to put him in deep waters here. Oliviera isn't used to the five-round fights like Dustin Poirier is. And Dustin Poirier can keep going and going. Dustin Poirier can lose a round bad and come back the next round and win. Uh, Charles, I'm not sure he can come back like that. So I'm going to go Dustin Poirier here to win the fight as the fight goes on, show that heart. And uh, I, I think that, I think the striking is going to be a big thing here. Um, but the biggest thing to me is the cardio. I think Dustin's got the better cardio over five rounds. So Dustin is my pick, but it's, it's a scary pick because the first two rounds, Charles can, can pull off any submission. So, but I'm, I'm banking on Dustin surviving that and then cruising to a, a five round decision or, or knockout. Let's take it to Vegas. At that point, we have five fights to choose from. On this main card, um, let's first consider perhaps which underdog we feel has the best shot at winning. Um, are, are there any of them that, that you have to offer here? All right, as far as underdog here, I like, uh, I want to take a chance with um, Car France. Kai Car France, okay. Um, I honestly, I don't have an underdog to offer here. Um, I do agree with the threat that Neil could be. I do agree with the threat that Car France could be. Um, but I, I don't think I'm going to sort of force an underdog pick on my end. So I'm going to leave that, that one blank. Uh, and in terms of favorite picks on the, fa on the main card, who are you taking a look at? Uh, I'm going to roll Dustin Poirier and um, Sean O'Malley. And Sean O'Malley. Whoops. All right, so those two fights would be a plus 111. $100 will return 211. And for our bigger betters, two, uh, $250 will return 528. And uh, once again... Our favorite car, our favorite picks are very similar from that perspective. I think Sean O'Malley has to be in there. I do think Nunez almost by default, although very high, high odds, minus 800. You almost want to exclude her for that reason because it still is a fight. Um, and again, you know, 
although albeit a close fight, Dustin Poirier is is going to be my pick as well. I'm going all the way in on him. So I'm looking at a plus 137 on that. $100 will return 237 And for our bigger betters, $250 will return 594 So we are going to sign off on that note. You know what to do at this point. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video. And most importantly, participate in the comments. We want to hear from you. How do you feel about our underdog picks? How do you feel about our favorite picks? Who are your favorite picks? What do you think is going to walk away with the titles? Uh, we want to hear all of that commentary and more in the comments below. But we are going to officially sign off on that note. This has been UFC 269, Charles Oliveira versus Dustin Poirier, main card prediction video by yours truly here at Boxing MMA Picks. He goes by the name of Zahn. I go by the name of Harris. And as usual, let's get this money. Let's get it.